What's up guys, welcome back. So today's video is on a topic that I've been asked about countless times here on the channel and in fishing groups, the nitro group and things like that. It's about my battery compartment and my wiring. How have I ran all the wiring in this nitro with everything we have on this boat that requires its own wiring and power wires and all that good stuff. How have I ran it and you know, what have I done to keep my battery compartment clean? I'm not gonna lie to you, I'll be the first to admit up until a few months ago, my battery compartment was a mess. It looked like a rat's nest, I couldn't take it anymore. My OCD was kicking in hardcore, and when we switched over to the ionic lithiums is actually when I rewired everything and cleaned it up. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we did, exactly what we used to get it done um, to make it look nice and neat back there, and I couldn't be happier with the results. So let's get back there and I'll show you exactly what we did. Before we get into how I ran the wiring to the fuse blocks and all that stuff, I just wanted to show you what exactly we're working with. We have two of the 12 volt 125 amp hour ionics and we have them hooked up in parallel so if you're not familiar with what that means really quick i mean there's plenty of videos out there that explain this but when you hook up two batteries in parallel which means you just run you see these two thick cables right here you have one going from a positive to the other positive and then the negative to the other negative what that does is it's basically acting as a single 12 volt battery but instead of 125 hour, I'm sorry, 125 amp hours and 125 amp hours, two different batteries, it's basically acting as a single 12 volt that where you would add those amp hours together. And now you have a 250 amp hour battery. Um, I, I did that because of everything we run on this boat. Again, the dual 12s, the dual 16s, the active target, the dual 12 foot talons, the LEDs, the live, everything. I mean, we run a lot on this boat. The Sonic Hub 2, I did that just so I never have to worry about running out of power. And guys, I'm telling you, this stuff is expensive. I understand that. It's not for everybody. But if you have the means to, do, to pull the trigger on these things, the Ionic batteries with the power pole charge that we have in this boat, and I do have videos on the power pole charge, um, you know, on the channel, I'll put a link up above you if you want to check it out, the initial video that we did on the water. I'm telling you, the performance is unreal. You could fish a weekend on these things and not have to worry about plugging this boat in, um, you know, until the end of the weekend. So I just wanted to show you what we're working with before we start getting into how we ran the wiring to the fuse blocks. So that's what we're dealing with. Two of the 12 volts hooked up in parallel to give us 250 amp hours total. One thing I want to mention real quick, guys, is you don't have to duplicate exactly what I'm going to show you as far as wiring size and things like that. Um, the fuses that I'm going to show you, that's something that you're going to have to kind of figure out on your own depending on what, how many amps you're drawing off the battery and the length of wiring you're going to run. There's a chart out there that actually you can plug in your what your setup is going to be, how many amps you're going to be drawing, the length of wiring and all that good stuff, and it'll give you a recommendation for the minimum size wiring that you should run. With that being said, you could always go a size bigger and not have to worry. It's not going to hurt anything. You never want to go too small. So as you're going to see, I ran some pretty big cables, pretty big wiring in this boat. We're drawing a lot on the battery. I just wanted to avoid any kind of voltage drop and it's not going to harm anything by going too big, but you can definitely do some damage by going too small. Okay. So if there's ever any doubt on what size wiring you should run, bump it up a size or two again you're not going to hurt anything by going too big you can hurt anything by go you can hurt a lot of things by going too small all right let me show you what we did all right here we go let me show you the whole setup and then we'll get into how we ran the wiring two batteries that i showed you coming over to two fuse blocks that i have mounted over here um the reason i went with that location is as you can see i have my my storage box removed storage box right there i removed it out of there to show you guys that way, when I put that storage box back in the boat, they're nice and it's nice and clean. Those fuse blocks are hidden well. Um, you can't see them well. And as you can see, we have all the wiring from everything coming down nice and neat, um, you know, tidied up. And for all the wiring we have on this boat, looks very clean and professional. All right. Now, coming back over to the battery. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you, too. I have them mounted, the two blocks mounted on, you can see they're sitting on a piece. What that is, it's, it, all it is is a piece of cutting board that I got off Amazon. And all I did was I epoxied it to the bottom of the boat. So that way I didn't actually have to drill any holes in the bottom of the boat. Not a huge deal, personal preference, but I just wanted to mention that. I epoxied the cutting board to the boat and then screwed my two fuse blocks into the cutting board. All right, so no holes drilled into the boat. Coming back over here, now just so nobody gets confused, 99% of the people watching this video are only going to have one battery, 
with probably one block okay i have two batteries with two blocks just because of everything i'm running but most people are going to have one battery one block all right same principles no matter what so so nobody gets confused just follow the steps that i'm showing you whether you have one or two batteries or one or two blocks all right so coming off the cranking battery very very simple all we have is a four gauge cable this middle one right here um, and again, this is where I mentioned earlier, I went a little bigger than most people do. Most people will run six to 10 coming out of the battery here. Um, you just never wanna go too small. Going bigger is not gonna hurt anything. You're gonna avoid voltage drop and protect yourself. Bigger, I guess, in, in my opinion, is better. You just never wanna go too small. I can't stress that enough. The other thing I wanna stress is make sure you're using marine grade products. I will link everything down below, but if you don't go with the products I list, just make sure they're marine grade. That's very, very important. All right, so I have my four gauge cable coming out of, off the positive post of the battery down to this 50 amp fuse. You can see it's connected right here. Now this fuse right here, there's a lot of debate on whether or not this fuse is needed, whether or not you have to have a fuse between the battery and the fuse block. It is not needed, but it's just another layer of protection. Um, and again, I, if, if I'm, I looked at it like if I'm gonna do this and spend the time and money on doing it, I wanna protect myself you know, every way I can. So this, this fuse isn't necessarily needed, but it is just an extra layer of protection to protect the system, all right, and protect the battery. So that four gauge cable comes down right into there. Out the other end of the, the um, fuse right here, you can see the cable comes down and it runs this is it right here loops around and hooks into the positive post of our fuse block okay negative same thing so the negative cable coming off the cranking battery is the middle one right here same thing runs down this is right here it's four gauge into the negative post of the block all right so before I show you the, the other battery and the other block, well, let me pop the cover off here and I'll show you um, how we have everything ran off the block itself. Okay, so here's the block. All we did was pop the cover off, okay? And here's the positive cable coming down from the positive post on the battery that comes out of that 50 amp fuse I showed you. And here's the negative, okay? So that's, this is where you would hook, if you're new to these fuse blocks, this is where you would hook your positive and negative two. There's a positive post on one side, the negative main post on that side. Okay, now all of these other wires, these are the wires, the positive wires that go out to all of our accessories. And you can see, if you look at my, my cover, we have them labeled. So Livewell LEDs, Blue Waters, Talon Anchor Light, Interior LEDs, and that's my jack plate, this wire over here, when you put the cover on. This wire over here goes to the switch for my jack plate and my talons. Okay, so you can label all these, uh, put labels on these so you know exactly what these wires go to. All right, so looking at the cover, this one here goes to my Livewell LEDs. This one here goes to my Blue Waters, my talon anchor light, my interior LEDs, and these are the positives. So you just pop an appropriate size fuse into the slot here. Okay, you can see all the empty spots don't have fuses in them. Um, so whatever spot you use, just put the appropriate size fuse into um, the spot. Like most of my LEDs only require um, a 3 amp fuse. My interiors were, were required a little bit bigger one just because I have so many of them. All right, and then the negatives for all of, this, all of the same items, you just run to this whole side over here is the negative side of the panel. All right, so you, this would be the positive from my um my live well leds the negative from the leds i believe is this one right here i have them all labeled you can see just so i know what's what um you know when if i ever have to rewire or anything ever again i know exactly what's what all right so it's that simple don't overthink it all you have to do is run that bigger cable i've used four gauge from the battery to the block positive and negative and then you just simply run all of your accessories these are all the positive slots with the appropriate fuse and then the negative from your accessories whether it's leds or whatever the case may be um, comes to the negative side of the block all right that simple don't overthink this process okay so let me show you the electronics side and uh, we'll wrap it up okay the second block coming off the electronics battery same exact thing four gauge wire you can see this is the positive side four gauge wire comes down to another 50 amp fuse same exact thing 
out the other end. You can see that red wire down there. Shoots all the way over and hooks into the positive side of the block right here. Negative four gauge. I actually have it wrapped up in that this cable sleeve comes down. I used um, little cable um, securement devices, uh, which again, I'll link everything down below if you want to use what I used, but it just runs over into the negative side of the block. Okay, and if you pop this off, it's the same exact thing. You can see the labels right there. So this block I have dedicated just to my electronics. All right, so you can see I have um, this positive goes to, um, looking at the, if you look at the labels here, this positive goes to the bottom 16 inch live on the front of the boat. This one goes to the left 12 inch live at the console, my right 12 inch live at the console, my active target, or I'm sorry, my top 16 inch live on the front and then my active target. So this fuse block is only my electronics and my active target. Okay, and then the same thing up here would be the negative side. So you have your positives down here with the appropriate size fuse negatives coming in from those electronics as well all right and then you just run them up to you know the appropriate location every boat's going to vary there one thing i will say about nitro is they give you a lot of room to wire i got to give them credit there uh, as i mentioned i have so many things in this boat that require wiring i have more wiring shoved in the in the gunnels of this boat it's <laughs> it's crazy the amount of wiring that i've ran in this thing so all right but it's that simple to hook up to fuse blocks guys don't overthink it a lot of guys think this is a you know a hard process or you know it's very difficult to do and it's just it's not i mean that's really all there is to it you have your positive and negative coming off the battery into the block and then you just run your positive and negatives off of the block to the appropriate accessories there you have it guys hopefully this helps clear up any confusion out there on how to use fuse blocks to clean up your battery compartment when you have multiple wires coming in from different accessories all right very easy to do don't get intimidated by this it's very simple if you just follow the steps that i showed you the three biggest things to remember are wire size you want to make sure you're using the appropriate size cable not only going from the battery to the block but also from the block out to all of your accessories okay bigger is always better um, you know, I'll put that website down below that has that wiring calculator on it to determine what gauge you should use. But if you have any doubt or if you're in between sizes or right on the edge, always go to the next biggest size wire. You're not going to do any damage by going bigger. My four gauge going from my batteries to the blocks, that's overkill. I know it is four gauge is definitely not needed, but it's not doing any harm. So, you know, again, it's not going to hurt anything. So why not? why not do it <laughs> you know you just never want to go too small that's the biggest key just don't go too small because then you can do some damage to your um to your accessories possibly fire hazard it's just it's just not a good practice the second thing to make sure is make sure you're using the uh, the appropriate size fuses in your block itself okay so whatever whatever accessory you're running off of your blocks whether it's the sonic club 2 or a graph or leds whatever it is they usually come with the appropriate size fuse to use if they don't check the user manual it should have in there what size fuse it, re it requires if it doesn't ask me or check online i mean if i don't know i'll look it up for you but there's honestly there's a good chance that i would know off the top of my head for you with all the wiring that i've done on this boat um and in the past but the third thing is um marine grade products make sure you're using marine grade products i'm going to put all the links down below as i mentioned um so everything i'm going to link below is you know approved for for boating and marine settings um but if you don't go with what i link down below just make sure whatever you use is marine grade all right very simple to do guys i highly recommend it my my battery compartment was a mess before i did this i couldn't take it anymore i couldn't stand it um so i'm so glad that i put the time and the effort into doing this it's just much neater it's safer as well. You never want to have a ton of ring terminals coming off your battery, off a single post on a battery. It's just not good practice. Um, as far as mounting the fuse blocks and, and where to run the wiring, that's going to vary depending on your setup. So that's kind of personal preference. I showed you how I mounted my blocks on that cutting board and the location I put mine in, but you might want to do something different, and that's, that's perfectly fine. You know, if you just follow the principles that I showed you, the rest is personal preference as far as, you know, where you're running your cables, where you're going to mount your fuse blocks, um, what wires you're going to group together to make it look nice and clean, how you're going to secure the wires. That's all personal preference, okay? Um, as I mentioned, I'll link everything I use below. If you want to kind of duplicate or 
almost copy what I did, you know, the best you can, by all means, go nuts. If not, just follow the principles I showed you in this video and you'll be all right. Any questions, comments, concerns, as always, leave them down below. You guys know I always get back to you. Um, eventually, it might take me a few days, but uh, I always get back, get back to you and answer any questions you have. So let me know if there's anything I didn't cover or if you're not sure or uh, unclear on anything, and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next video. Take care.